Yo, 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 man, what it is and what it ain't, man. It's your boy B.L. Ratchet from the We Are Florida podcast, presented by Mix One Essentials. We got special co host with us today. E. Banks. For show, for show, man. And we got returning guests here with us today, man. No other than Ronnie Red. Hit that like and subscribe and share on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. I'm getting a little better at this right here, man. I remember I was stumbling all over words and everything, man. It was I was going crazy, man. How y'all doing today, man? Man, we all right, man. I'm just kicking it, just kicking it. Okay, I'm glad to be here, though. For yeah, sure, for sure. Glad, sure. To glad, that, glad that you know what I'm saying, how you returning. Definitely, definitely. For sure. So how you been? I've been taking it easy, man. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to, you know, uh, educate and um, promote and, and, you know, just give out the message. You know what I'm saying? I know I can't save everybody, and I ain't trying to save everybody. You know, but um, if I can get in one person head and that one can get in a hundred or that one can get in a thousand, I won. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And you know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at it. For sure, for sure. So, man, like, we were talking a little bit off camera, man. You say all your friends, you got friends that's doing 20 years. Yeah, yeah, man, it'd be crazy because when I be talking on the phone and stuff like that, it's either I'm talking to somebody that's free that did that done been in 25 or 30 years or 20 or somebody that's currently incarcerated. But you got to think that that's kind of like been my life, you know what I'm saying, and definitely where the place that I come from, I left some good men behind. Shout out to GG, my co-defendant. Shout out to uh, uh, Jonathan Gaines. Shout out to my son. Shout out to my son, you know what I'm saying, Lil Ronnie. You know, so, yeah, this thing is personal. For sure. And then I was going to say, you say your son, he, he doing some time right now, too. Like, how long he got left, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, my son has a couple more years left. My son been in for 15 years, man. My mm. blood son is named after me. It looked just like his father. Yeah, I, know. I seen a couple of pictures when you exactly. was posting them in there. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, my son been in 15 years. You know, and I don't say that to brag, you know, because no parent wants their child to endure any kind of pain that they endured. You know what I'm saying? He just was... You know, he grew up in the same environment I grew up in, and I was somewhat absent, even though he was still visiting me in prison. But that's not enough at a kid's adolescent age. So at sometimes I feel like I dropped the ball on that. You know, but he always make me feel like a big dog. You know, because it's like my brother. You know, you got to think is that he, you know, he, that boy, dude, he got them 34, 35 years old. And you know what I'm saying? Look at his pops. Thank you. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And I just say that to say is that I'm proud of him. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of him no matter what. I'm proud of him. Okay. He's a man and everything that I represent, he represents. From the no telling to the no perv shit to the no homo shit, no shot at anybody. Just keeping it 100. You know what I'm saying? And just, you know, just standing up like a man, man. What type of conversations do you and your, you know what I'm saying, son have like nowadays, like now that you done did, you know, your time and he's still in there? Well, you know, sometimes he have them down days. But the irony of me and his situation is, it's almost like the apple don't fall far from the tree. I, you know, I like hate to sound mean when I say that, but what's the irony of his daddy doing, you know, twenty years and the son doing twenty years? So if anybody can identify with any pain or any ups and downs or anxiety or PTSDs that he may or may not be, di no, I mean, dealing with, his father can understand it because I just went through it. So when I talk to him to answer your question, that's what I talk to him about. But you know, he be pretty much holding it together. But when he not, you know, when he have those down days, me as a parent, I know it. You know, it's my sure. son. For sure, that's what's up. That's what's up. So like, man, let's let's talk about you know what I'm saying a little bit about Tampa. Okay. Like they, it was this, it was this jail that got knocked down called Morgan Street Jail. Yeah. Ain't that's what it was called? Yeah, it was called Morgan Street uh, 1301. Okay. Morgan Street Jail. I grew up a lot of my adolescent years in the AKA Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Yeah, it was bad, man. <laughs> I don't know if anybody know the history of Morgan Street Jail. You know, definitely not the new generation, but y'all definitely need to do y'all research. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a place I was there when I was 15, 14, 16 years old in that place. And imagine being in jail and there's no supervision. And what I mean by, damn, I keep looking down at this guy, damn. And what I mean by there's no supervision is they putting you in a cell, like a 16 to 24-man cell, and at times it's overcrowded, so it's cots on the floor, but they're just putting you in these cells, and there's no police in there. The only thing they do is just like, you know how you see the old movies and shit, and they see, you just see a catwalk, like a long-ass hall, and it's just some bars on one side. That's exactly what it is. 
So imagine being caged up in there like that, and you know people was tripping on hoods back then. And this was in downtown Tampa. It was in downtown Tampa, man. Okay. It was in downtown Tampa. Listen, I don't like. Listen, I don't actually seen dudes, bro, that done bust out crying when they told them they finna go to Morgan Street, meaning that you start to go to Orange Road first, and the violent offenders or the murderers or robbers and stuff like that. We and what I mean, we, because I ain't never got lucky a whole many times and stayed at Orange Road. They always shipped me over there, but I was so crazy that um I liked it. Ain't that some crazy shit? You liked it more. I loved it. I loved sure. it. Yeah, I loved it. And like, even you know. speaking like on Morgan, like Morgan Street Jail, you know, like that was like the Central Park area, like you know. But it at 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 like that time that didn't matter. Yeah. Mor- Morgan Street Jail downtown was the place where they housed all violent offenders in Tampa, Florida. You know what I'm saying? And you had to be a man in there, bro. That's like right outside the hood. Morgan bro. Street, right by the courthouse. Nah. Yeah, 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 he yeah, right, he right, he right. Yeah, yeah. They're like all that's like in a three to five minute radius from Central Park mm-hmm. to everything is right there. Two, three minutes. Yeah, it's right everything there. Everything a bend in the turn. Like ain't mm-hmm. no girl from Central Park. I'm gonna tell all y'all women from Central Park and Tampa Park and all that whole area over there, Tampa Heights. Y'all ain't have no reason not to go see a nigga in jail. I'm talking to y'all asses on Facebook because y'all was right across the goddamn street. I'm you talking about that, that bitch. That bitch was right there. <laughs> That bill was right there for sure, man. My paperwork 100. Y'all know I got to promote this shit, man. For sure. So, like, how bad was that jail, though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because they didn't tore it down. And Put it like this like, right here. Put it like this right here. Is that the jail was so bad, it was like the only cell that I wouldn't go in in that jail was a West Tampa cell. Because West Tampa was, like, always, like, you know, it was always some money getting fly niggas from West Tampa. I ain't going to take nothing from them niggas over there. But they was just, like, alienated to themselves. Like, nobody liked them back then. You know what I'm saying? And, like, even right now to this day, if you check the history, the average nigga from West Tampa got a baby from a chick from West Tampa. They was real ter- They was very territorial about women in West Tampa. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, I would just say East Tampa, man. You know, that's where I grew up at. I grew up, at, I mean, I, I ain't never have no beef with nobody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, I never had no full, you know, no no stone cold beef with no neighborhood because I was more or less a dude that stayed incarcerated. So I had them built relationships with dudes that's from my neighborhood that couldn't reach. I was doing that at a young age. Imagine at 15, 16 years old, I'm going to juvie. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to prisons at 15 to 16 years old. So I'm meeting dudes from all over the city, dudes that's tough. Dudes that I, you know what I'm saying, they think they tougher than me, I think they tougher than them, but now we may be beefing on the street at some point, but now we up the road and we fighting against cities. We fighting against the Miamis and the Jacksonvilles, so we done let all that hood shit go. So now when we get out, we cool, that shit over with. We ain't tripping about that old ass shit no more. Now I can come to your project and shoot dice and ain't nobody going to fuck with me. But what if you got homeboys that's still on that type of time, though? Well, I don't think it can overpower me, and what I mean overpower me is... um. If I don't develop a bond with a dude up the road, that's like you. Yeah. Okay, you from Clearwater. Mm-hmm. I done developed a bond with y'all up the road. We done went knife to knife, toe to toe with each yeah. other. You can come to my hood at any motherfucking given time, nigga. Ain't a bitch gonna fuck with you, man. That's true. Because now I, it's disrespectful. But you know you what I mean. But like y'all in there, right? But the, on the outs, y'all dogs still beefing. Well, we really ain't gonna get in that at that point. Okay. You know, if 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 anything, I would try to me and him would try to be the big dogs of the situation and try to fix it. You know what I'm saying? If it's that deep. If I fuck with him for real, for real, and he fuck with me, and he got some little niggas over there, and I got some little niggas over here, and he's just some hot-headed little motherfuckers, and I can talk to him, and he can talk to his people, you got damn right we can fix it. For sure. Ain't no question we can fix it. Man, like, OGs, like, the, I mean, speaking, even speaking on OGs, man, the, that's like, I don't know, that shit seem like foreign now. You <laughs> feel me? I ain't gonna lie, like, because a lot of little, little niggas is not listening to no OGs right and now. And listen, man, I want to... Listen, man, I want to shout out. I want to shout out to all my young supporters, man. And what I mean young supporters, I'm talking about the young Gs, man, from 21 to 28, man. They be surprising me, bro. I ain't going to lie, bro. I can be anywhere in public or anything like that, and them little niggas will run up on a nigga, dog, and give a nigga respect, bro. For real. They do, bro. And at first, I didn't, you know, at first I was seeing it, but when it just started happening a whole, whole lot, then I started looking you know, at the numbers and, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that to see who your audience is. And I saw it was them, and I was like, okay, this is what it is. And I'm, But I'm going to tell you one thing about you, though, Ronnie. Like, 
you different. So everybody, everybody gonna take it in different on what you saying. You feel me? If you if you spitting out that game on what they kind of was kind of brought up under, you feel right. me? They gonna take they gonna take heed to it. But it's a lot of kids right now that's just on the internet that just looking at you know what I'm saying, hear what you saying, but they don't never understand or gonna feel what you saying. Correct. You get what I'm saying? And now now nowadays the internet is the OGs to. You feel me, the kids? Yeah. Cause it's like they 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 rather watch they they favorite rapper tell them what to do than somebody in their neighborhood. Yeah. I'm like this right here, man. Is that I was in the environment, and the you know you not you know and like people get the feds. They you know what I'm saying they get it fucked up. Like when you talking to feds, like people think it's something sweet. Yeah, maybe at the mediums and them camps and them lows and the Martha Stewart's and Wesley Snipe spots. But the place I was at in the maximum security USP penitentiaries is not like that, bro. Niggas dying in that bitch, bro. You going and got down to the Macquarie's, to the Big Sandys, to the Pollocks, to the Atwaters, to the Victorville's, to the Lee Counties, to the Hazeltons. Them niggas killing in there daily, bro. It ain't no motherfucking joke. The only difference in the state and the Fed is that niggas in the Fed can get money. That's the only thing it is. That don't mean that niggas ain't getting fucked up in there because you can hustle good and make money. You know what I'm saying? Niggas in there just done found a way. Niggas hustling drugs and cell phones and doing what the fuck they got to do, man. You dig what I'm saying? And I ain't trying to like, like I be hating, like, like, like I don't, I don't never want to feel like I'm, like I'm defending myself in any kind of way, because I'm doing this right here. It took a, like a long time for me to get into this, because I always say, even on these platforms, that this is something different. You know what I'm saying? Imagine my nigga, you've been gone for 21 years, my nigga. From '82 to 2002, a lot had changed. I'm gonna say it again. From '82 to 2002, a whole lot had goddamn changed. You know what I, mean? I know it has. And mm-hmm. I was gonna ask you like. Uh, what's some of the things that have changed though to you? You know what I'm saying? The biggest things besides like, you know, you know, phones and cars and stuff. That's little, you know, minor things you know is going to change. I think the mindset of men. Okay. And I think the dating world. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and I want to address this right here, man. I want to address this right here. It's like the whole mindset of I'm a killer nigga. Can I go hard on it? I can cuss and all that, right? Yeah, you, you good. I'm going to kill a nigga because uh, he fucked my bitch. I think that's the most dumbest, like, the only person that I feel obligated to at that point if a dude crossed me in that way and had sex with my motherfucking woman or something like that is my brother or my cousin or my friend, and I still ain't going to kill him, I'm going to cut him loose, and I ain't going to kill the broad and hit no sucker move like that. I'm talking about these dudes out here that's literally don't even know a nigga. And if you do know a nigga, you ain't in no kind of alliance with him. And you want to murk me because of this chick, my nigga. And pussy got some power. That is cra- but That's, but that's this, how they but feel. But right here. This is how crazy it was. Because back in my day, even if you was a sucker like that, right, and you wanted to have a sucker attack. That's what I call it, a sucker attack. Mm-hmm. And you want to have a sucker attack, right? You would suppress that because you didn't want the stigma that was associated with being that type of suck ass nigga that killed the nigga by the chick, my nigga. Yeah. You, you, you suppressed it. Because it was suckers back then too. I ain't saying yeah. it wasn't. They just didn't act out on that shit like that. Mm-hmm. There's a so, lot more niggas, like, you know, in my generation, a little bit under and a little bit younger, but that's domestic violence to fuck up. Bro, they, they didn't send it. Been up and I'm just saying that to say, man, that's the way all, that's where the old heads history, come in at, man. You know? That's where the old heads come in at, man. It's supposed to give y'all youngsters some real game, man. For real, man. And when I mean game, man, I, you know, I mean a game of life. I don't mean mm-hmm. no motherfucking drug dealing and pistol toting and shooting up no folk and all that when I be talking about game and all that type of shit. You did what I'm saying? I can't help who I am. You know, I don't commit crimes no more. I ain't in the streets no more, nothing like that. I'm a civilian, man. I don't want no smoke. I don't want no trouble out of y'all. I'm <laughs> crying with tears in my eyes. Just leave me alone. I'm just trying to live and go to Walt Disney World. For sure. For sure. So, man, what you think about women in prison? <clears throat> um, That's why I post a lot of videos on my social media outlet. That's a good question Um, about women in prison because, you know, a lot of my hashtags are free to ladies you know, and stuff like that, is because I be wanting our women, no matter what color they are, to see the effect that incarceration has on families. Like, a lot of these women look just like y'all, ladies. They got their lace fronts on. They got their long, you know, they, they you know, their pretty lashes. 
You know what I'm saying? They got their little goddamn dresses on, their little silk dresses. They looking sexy as a motherfucker. But then next thing you know, in that same caption, she in a prison, a federal or a state prison uniform, you know, saying, you know, how she just did 10 years. You know, she was away from her babies and all that. Nine times out of 10, that woman ain't killed nobody. You know what I'm saying? That woman probably got caught up in some dope shit with her boyfriend or some shit like that. But 10 years with that? You know, and, you know, not to make it racial or anything, but how many white women are sitting in prison for 10 or 15 years because they was, uh, you know, they was associated with a boyfriend that was a drug dealer. And she probably hit a few runs every now and then. All right. 15 years for that shit. Come on, man. Mm. So how does it go with as uh, far as the, the female guards that's in the in having access and cause you know you gotta pay attention to the routes, everything got to go through that line and like getting the heads up on the linking with the right CEO. That I cause that, that's reality. That happens. Well, um it's like prison definitely on a penitentiary stance is like a whole like is a world within itself with its own economy. You know, they got drugs. Like I said, they got phones. Everybody know we all in here got loved ones that you people done hit you on the jack from in jail or in prison. You know, goddamn, they everywhere in there. So it's definitely corruption in there. And when I went in there, it was like an open air market. Like when I went back to court, I went back to court. I got out of prison in 2022. I went back to court in 2017 under a case. Look this up, Ronnie Dixon, under a case called the Johnson case. I would have got out of prison, but had I not had so many infractions. Um, the judge would have let me out, but I had like 32 infractions and, you know, from drugs to, to, uh, knives, to contraband, to everything. Yeah. And the judge asked me why, you know, like, how did I obtain all this right here? And I basically told her, like, when I left the streets, I was around all these drugs and animals and all these bad things. And when I went in prison, I was around the same officers (laughs) that was animals and they was bringing in drugs and they was corrupt in the prison and they wasn't rehabilitating me. You know what I mean? So that's what I told the judge. So um, nah, they probably didn't like that. But anyway, she ended up taking four years off of my sentence, and I ended up doing five more years from 17 to 22. But she could have released me. That's why I was going with that. But you, <clears throat> So basically, like, you was just, you said some stuff that, that, that caused you to get, like, not released that day? Not really said some stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because she had her mind made up anyway. Mm-hmm. So Before I don't you even got though. Exactly. I don't think it was anything that I said. <laughs> I think she was more upset that I was able to just call it out the way that I called it out. Because sure. I knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the way she was looking at it. Like, look at you, you done been in trouble and stuff like that. And I'm putting it basically on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Saying, hey, y'all the one who did it, which it was true. It was true. Imagine going sure. to a prison, bro. I went to Coleman, my first prison. Right, they was over there selling alcohol and little bags like this. You know, a little, you know, like a little. That bulk, <clears throat> man, they putting yeah, yeah, they the putting bulk. it in a bag, bro, and they selling it. They do might have a hundred bags, and he on the corner selling it, bro. Yeah. Like he flicking them off, and they giving them stamps, and he counting the money, jamming it in his pocket. It was like a corner. It was a few corners over there, like yeah, stores. Open air. I'm not talking about hiding in a unit. This is outside, outside of a dormitory, like on the corner. Where the grass wore all out. You can tell niggas anywhere where grass wore out, there's niggas around. <laughs> anywhere where some grass wore out, I hate to say it, y'all, there's some niggas around. Like, the niggas just like, like it's nice grass, but it's like, it's just a wore out path. It's some motherfucking niggas around, man. I ain't gonna lie. So when you, when you <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you this question. The, 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 the other niggas in prison be like, running red, like that's a slick talking nigga? Because um, you, you got away with your words. <laughs> I don't even look at it like that, right? Like, I don't even like to look at my own videos and stuff like mm-hmm. that, right? And I don't really look at it as slick talking. I just look at it as, because all the niggas I grew up with. Because it could be like a finesse. But this is the thing me? about it. All okay. the old school niggas that I know, this is normal. I know. Like, they be laughing sometimes. <laughs> we be laughing behind closed doors and shit like that because they know this is, this is me, the way that I act and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And the way that I talk, this and that. Listen, man, I can be around my dear mother my mother's still living. I act the same way minus the cussing because okay. I don't curse in front of my mama because I respect my mama. But I be the same way that I am. You know what I mean? Okay. I just don't cuss. With, with you saying you talking like, you know what I'm saying, how you be talking. Did you ever experience verbal like abuse while you was, you know what I'm saying, in jail? Yeah, by the hands of the goddamn police. A lot of verbal motherfucking abuse okay. and you ain't going to do a fuck thing about it. Get your ass over there. Get, get, bend over, squat, all that. All right, hey, man. 
Definitely in Lake Butler. Y'all, all right, hey, goddamn, y'all got me. <laughs> y'all done went through a lot of verbal abuse For sure. at the hands of the system. I see you got the tats, and yep. I know in, in when you locked up, they make sure they got a count of what tats you got and stuff like that. And also, certain tats can correlate to certain gangs. Right. And I remember the officers, some officers had the spider on their elbows off rip. You knew they was affiliated with some of the inmates. How were you able to, you know, because you got to be on the swivel for that in the... Correct. Um, It was more or less like I wasn't affiliated with any gang. I'm from Florida. That's what, you know, the feds, I'm going to break this down for y'all real, real fast. In the fed, you're going to be a part of something, you know, and what I mean a part of something, you're going to be a part of a gang. And everybody is a gang in a sense, even if you with the Christian boys, you know what I mean, or you with the goddamn... um. The Bloods, the Crips, you know, the Florida, the Georgias. Even if you with a whole bunch of gays, that's a clique over there, you know. And I said that to say is, um, that's what you know. That's what I pretty much represented. So I didn't have any gang tattoos on me, mm-hmm. so I didn't have to worry about that part of it. It was just mm-hmm. more of the art of it and everything that told, you know that tells a story about my life. For sure. So, so um, this term that they use in, in jail, I seen. I think I seen you posting about it, gunning. Yes. So let's speak about gunning, God man. Damn. How we get the gunning? <laughs> let's speak about gunning. All right. Gunning, what is gunning? Gunning is a group of perverts that's in prison systems probably all over the United States or all over the world that are running around masturbating off of these women COs, and in some small cases, men, and they're called gunners. In some cases... They are not homosexuals in some cases, just keeping it a buck. Not all of them. Some of them is freaks or whatever, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But not all of them are. Some of them are just some horny young motherfuckers that have been <laughs> in prison for 10, 15 years, and they're horny. And they see a woman, and they masturbate off the woman. I've never done it. It's a it's a disciplinary report. We call them shots in the Fed. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, a 205. A 205. It's almost like it's equivalent to a lewd, deceivious act. Okay. If you're in a park somewhere and you pull your penis out and you masturbate in front of right. somebody, it's the exact same thing as that. They just do it in prison. But they're a group of sick dudes, man. You know, they're, and I like and like one of my posts, I broke down the whole. Uh, I was basically just warming, you know, just trying to warn the ladies of the, uh, you know, the different type of you know homosexuals and predators that's out there in the world. No shot at the, you know, at the community. I'm just telling you about the community in there. It's a different world. But listen, let me ask you a question though too. So, you know, even in the county jail, man, you 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 in there with with with, with workers. You feel me? The the let's just say the the you know the cafeteria. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the kitchen. Correct. Feel me? Those workers just be regular outside workers that just coming to work. Correct. You can holler at them easy. Yeah, I mean, so it's look- like they hollering at you. Correct. You hollering at them, the only way you can get to them is by gunning. Unless, you know what I'm saying, they ready to take that risk for you. No, but I don't think that the approach should be if she want to holler at you and you want to holler at her. I don't think the approach should be that you But pull. I get what you're saying about the yeah. other side. Though. Yeah, I don't think your approach should be that you pull your penis out and start <laughs> masturbating at the woman because you feel like she wants you. I feel like your approach should be to holler at her or shoot her a note or something because, you know, I done did all that. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't finna just, I just feel like a woman would look at you a certain way mm-hmm. if she don't really know you and you don't know her and all of a sudden you just pull your joint out and start beating off to her. Like, you're going to scare the hell out of that goddamn woman. But, you know what yeah, I'm saying? The, but Some of the females like it. That's what I was just about it's to say. Crazy. Yeah, mom, go some for it. Like that's, just it like, bro. Bro, that's, that's just like a female <laughs> having a pen pal. You feel me? That's out here. Correct. Uh, you, you've been in there 20 years and you done been doing, you, you know what I'm saying? You on your 16th year. Correct. You write a girl from my she don't know nothing about the jail system, no nothing, but you persuading her and not, she holding you down to your 20th release date, your EOS date. Mm-hmm. Like, wait, like, you feel me? So it's like, girls do what the fuck they want to do. In fact. You feel correct. me? So it's like, damn, I, don't, I can't really like, you know, I don't really know. Even when it comes down to the Vizos, you got certain prisons that, I, I, I'm, you pre- I'm pretty sure you probably witnessed it. Uh, sex in the visos. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That's right. That definitely goes down. It goes down. And you weren't married, and you you had any conjugal visits? 
Um, they don't have those in the Fed. They don't have conjugal visits in the Fed. Um, that's like a misconception. Um, mm. That's more like a New York, New Jersey thing. Okay. They been took that out of the Feds in the 70s, bro. Mm -hmm. Ain't no federal prison where you can have conjugal visits. So even that's if you married, myth. none of that? No, none of that. You can't do that. Okay. You just can't. No BOP, federal government, prison, you cannot do that. Mm. I go on record, and I challenge it. Because okay. I don't know nobody got away with that one. Okay, okay. Probably snuck in and got a little something in the visiting part, but no, nah, I'm talking about legally. No, there's no such thing as that, bro. Don't let no ever let nobody tell you that. And it haven't been like that in 40 years. Yes. What happens when you get jammed up in Vizzo doing that in, in feds? I mean, they might take your visit for uh, three to six months. I know some dudes that done literally went for broke. They done been in so long, and they just almost like they almost warned a couple of partners out there. Hey, man, at the end, man, just cover your kids' eyes, man. And they done went for broke. And guess what? I can't even blame them. What you said? Can you, can you, like, what What that mean? I mean, go for broke, like, if a dude sitting out in the visiting park and um, he finna fuck his old lady in front of everybody, man. He finna hike her skirt but up. how can he get her to commit to some shit like that in front of all, everybody in the visitation Yeah, evidently room. it was planned before they got there. She all in. She was already in. She all before in. Before he came and told me, Damn. she was locked all the way in. <laughs> He wasn't finna just surprise her with it. God damn. So going in, just imagine going in the visitation room, right? Yeah. And, and old boy and I already told you this is what we finna do the whoop and you out there with your old girl, you gotta tap on the back. Just turn your back, baby. They finna feel me? Yeah, and, and that's, that's crazy. That's the code of the whole system. You know, you got to see no you see, you ain't seen nothing. You know. Uh how many times you been in situations where you got that? You got to play the game like you don't know. We on the podcast. I'm sorry about that, fellas. When you got to play the game like you don't know what's going on. You you see it, but you got to act dumb to it. Oh, yeah, man. It's like I was telling dudes the other day. I say, bro, you got to realize is that this whole social media platform is different for me, but it's not intimidating at all because I raised killers in prison. And what I mean by that is... It was some young niggas in there that I was with that I knew was tougher than me on the streets. I knew probably put in way more work than me, but by the time they had got to me, I had been in prison 15 or 20 years, and they 30 fresh in. So they don't run shit in here. You know, he may be a gangster on the street, and he, and he could be a gangster in here. I'm not saying that he's not, but at that point, he's not. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just not how the pens run. You're not going to go in you no know, United States yeah, penitentiary running it's shit. that zero. Yeah. You may go in there with some money and get a ticket and open up a ticket for the homeboys and buy some shoes for everybody. You can do that and be a paymaster. You know what I'm saying? You can play that game. <laughs> but you ain't finna come there off the streets. And you can come there and be respected, but you're not finna come there and be no shot caller. You have to earn that. You got to be in there for a long time and you got to have, you know, age on you. You know what I'm saying? To be talking about, you know what I'm saying? And I don't say that at any shots at any of my partners when I say running men. I'm just saying me, you know, me being a head of Florida you know, Florida cars at times. You know what I'm saying? I used to have to talk them young niggas down. Them motherfuckers crazy from Florida, man. Like, Florida is very respected in the federal penitentiaries. Mm -hmm. Let's not get that twisted. I can, goddamn it, I can stamp that. We're very respected. And y'all have to realize that there's a lot of gentlemen that's in these federal penitentiaries that's been gone for 20, 30 years and putting in work in the name of Florida that y'all will never meet. But they made it so Florida can be respected. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't pushovers or nothing like that. The only thing you got to do from Florida is be, your paperwork got to be 100. You ain't told on nobody. You know, you ain't got no pervert shit in there dealing with no kids, anything like that. And, you know what I'm saying, you have, you know what I'm saying, basically you haven't snitched and you checked out. Other than that, you cool. You ain't got to be the toughest or the biggest because a man ain't measured by his brawn, by his muscles or anything like that. I don't care how small and big you is. A man is measured by his heart and his spirit, bro. You can lose every fight. Just fight all. You can lose 100 fights. Just fight all 100 of them. That's a man to me, bro. That's a real man, for real, for real. For sure. So even speaking on you saying your paperwork, like my paperwork is 100, how does how does another inmate see your paperwork? Like come across your paperwork? Do you just show it to you them? You have, like, no. When you go to the United States Penitentiary, and this way this mainly applies at, it doesn't apply at mediums, camps, and lows. When you go to the United States Penitentiary, you have 30 days to get what they call paperwork. And your paperwork is 
pretty much your indictment, your um, your um, in some cases your transcripts, uh, your docket sheet, and things like that. And it tells if you have a five K one, and a five K one is when you've agreed to assist the government. You know, then they have what they call a Rule 35. And a Rule 35 is after you go to prison and you assist the government. It's basically the same thing. It's just one is at the beginning and one is during. So we can be able to see that. And, you know what I'm saying, you can't hide it. Because the because basically the transcripts doesn't lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't be where I'm at on this platform around as many as peoples that I know in these places and talking like I talk without nobody ever saying nothing because they can't. You know what I'm saying? And and, and 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 that's what I stand on. I don't want to put nobody's family in prison because I know the pain that's associated with that. You know, it happened to me. So I, it, what you was going to say? They say there's two types of people in feds. One that wish they told. And one that told. <laughs> okay, you know? even that was going to piggyback off my question. So say if somebody, you know, they paperwork 100, they get to prison. You got 30 days to get it up. All right, listen though, you doing you, they 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 came in there, everything solid, you feel me? But they become a rat while they're in jail. Mm-hmm. If we find they out, start, yeah. if they we start find, snitching on everybody. What's if going we on find in out, bitch. if we find out that somebody's in the Florida car, because we call cars. Let me explain that to y'all. A car is considered the Florida who we are from Florida. I don't call it a gang or whatever. We don't call it no gang at all. We never use that term, but a car is of people, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, of guys from Florida. Collective body. And if you're from the Florida car and we find that out, and in some cases, well, in, it's about a 60-40. I'm going to go a 60-40. And the way I say a 60-40, a 60 that you're going to get walked up and walked up is you're going to have to leave this prison and try it somewhere else without us killing you. And the 40% is the ones that'll probably get violence and stabbed on and beat up real bad and stuff like that. You ever had an untrustworthy book, uh, bunkie? Of course. I done had probably in my um, 21 years that I just did, I probably had about 50 different cellies. Because when yeah. you was moving, yeah. 50 cellies, yeah, though? Yeah, man. yeah, almost, man. I done had a lot of them. Shit. I had a lot of them. Especially, like, I mean, and when I mean 50... Because at times I would be in sales with dudes for two and three years at a time, five the most. Mm-hmm. But a lot of that time I was being shipped around from prison to prison and I was in a lot of holdovers. So when you're in those holdovers, you're in strange places and stuff yeah. like that in different states. And you know what I'm saying? Like I was in one in Oklahoma. I was in one in Brooklyn. I was in one in Atlanta. These are holdovers, bro, and they the worst. So when they transfer you, do they transfer you the same way that they do in state prison from your your, your, uh, your your wrist to your waist, from your waist to your feet? Same way? Uh, Yeah, the same way. Either that way. It's either two ways. The way you just explained in the same way but with a black box. With a black box? Yeah, you know. Some oh, okay, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Some gotcha. people get the black box. And for, and for the black box, y'all don't know, the black box is a box. They say a black man designed it. I don't know. But it's a black box. <clears throat> yeah, regular people get cuffed up regular. You got chains on your legs. You got chains coming up, and you're cuffed up like this. That's the regular way. And you can move your hands a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. But with the black box, they're going to cuff you, plus they designed the black box to go over these handcuffs some kind of well. Now you have minimal movement. Those are for high risk. I don't. You have a fluto on, on like, yes, on that's, air? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first time. Um, <laughs> I almost don't want to admit it, but that's the first time that my southern ass, I don't want to say country, but my southern ass got on a, a plane that big. <laughs> Your first flight was Man, with- listen, I was at the airport. I was at Tampa International Airport, bro. And I seen that big motherfucker coming up, and it was coming up, I swear to God, it was smoke coming from the tailpipe, and it was like <laughs> duct tape wrapped around the fin. You know how the, how the, the plane got a fin. <laughs> Come to find out, they say they had done uh, got that damn plane from Escobar or something back in the early 80s or something like that. The Fed had done confiscated it, and that's yeah. what they used to transport us in. Lord. I couldn't even imagine, though, boarding the, boarding the uh, yeah, one of the planes. Mm-hmm. Like you, how you just said Escobar, how you mentioned kind of like the cartel, was like they're ever... A, they say the mob used to be an e-boy back in the day. Is that true? Yes, man. Tampa has... Uh, let me see how much time I got on this, y'all. Tampa has a very rich history with the mob. If you go back to movies like The Goodfellas and um, what's the other one with uh, Robert De Niro? 
I think no, the good fellas in um casino, Cause, yeah, yeah, casino. They mentioned Tampa in those movies. And you got to think is a lot of those movies was based back in the 70s. You know, they did they ain't make them back in the 70s, but they was based back in the 70s. You know what I'm saying? And they was referencing Tampa. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. They was referencing Tampa way back then. So, yeah, man. Tampa yeah, definitely has a rich history. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I done met a lot of women from Tampa and men alike. And they say that it's very rare to meet a, a, um, a native of Tampa these days. And I'm like, I'm not understanding why they're saying this. Because when I was growing up, everybody was from Tampa. So you can imagine that. Mm-hmm. Right. When I'm growing up, everybody from here. You just right. from over here on this side, this side, this side, this side. You know, and when you did meet people from out of town, that's what they was, out of town. You know what I'm saying? You just didn't meet people every day. Well, I'm from New York. I'm from L.A. I'm from Oregon. I'm from Wyoming. You just didn't do that. So I guess that's why they were saying that. And I'm just here to just, you know, just bring back the history of Tampa, man. Let them know what it was, you know, to let them know that we had our own black district, Central Avenue, where Ray Charles performed and Tina Turner and, you know what I'm saying, wow. Red Fox and all that stuff, man. They, you know what I'm saying, they burnt it down. It was a big ride in Tampa in the 60s, you know what I'm saying, and they burnt it down and they towed Central Avenue down. Right now it's a hotel down there. I think it's on um, right by Central Park. I forgot what street it's on, but it's Twigs, right there on Twigs. There. It's an old wooden house. That's out of all that construction and beautiful stuff downtown. They can't even touch that wooden house and it's downtown, but they got a fence around it and it's leaning to the side. It sit on bricks and everything. But that's the was a hotel that Ray Charles them used to come to when they come because it was so segregated back in the sixties and stuff mm-hmm. like that, the fifties and sixties. That's the one. But the state, I mean, but the Iceville City can't touch it. It's mm-hmm. deep, bro. They can't touch it, bro. Like that's prime real that's like history. Mm-hmm. How you going to knock that? I'm talking about, and it's a wooden-ass house, one of them old-ass shotgun houses, bro. Okay. One sit on bricks, the ones right. you see in them old-ass movies. Yeah. It's an old one, like, and it's leaning because it's because because they not trying to remodel anything like that. I guess they ain't touching it, but they got a brand-new fence around that bitch, like, bitch, don't touch this. Mm-hmm. And then, like, even speaking on gentrification, bro, like, how you feel about that in Tampa, though? I'm talking about they didn't, I mean, they didn't really, like, kind of, you know, made it better, but how you feel, you know what I'm saying? Man, listen, this is what blowed my mind because you asked me a question, bro, about 30 minutes ago. And I'm going to go ahead and revisit that. Okay. Of what was different when I got out of, like, mind-boggling to a sense or something like that. And me being in my neighborhood where I'm from, Jackson Height, 34th over East Jackson Height, uh, 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 Florida. You know, they don't get mad if I don't say that. To see white people walking their dogs, their little Frenchies at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning in my neighborhood like that. But that doesn't trip me out as much as the people are still there, even though they're doing, the, you know, the whole movie and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? The, um, we haven't went anywhere yet. It ain't like that. So to see that, that was mind-blowing to me, bro. Like, I ain't never seen nothing like that for me to be riding down the street at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and just see a white woman with a spandex suit on at 2 o'clock in the morning with a ponytail just happily walking her two dogs. And I see it a lot. I be like, what the fuck is going on? And they not scared. Oh, no, they don't have no fear for your ass either. They, if you try to turn the corner and she walking the dog at 2 in the morning, she might look at you and snuff and, and motherfucking take over the roadway. Mm-hmm. Real talk, bro. He laugh. Real talk. Some real caring shit, bro. I got cut off the other day in my own neighborhood that I grew up in, bro, for 40 years, my nigga. I got cut off, and she was looking at me like I was crazy, dog. And you the one who in violation in my neighborhood. You in straight violation because you done cut me off. Yeah, she looked like she wanted to she get out She cut you off at the roundabout right there? And she <laughs> cut me off on one of them goddamn corners. I forgot what corner it was, but I was in my neighborhood, bro. And she cut me off. And I wasn't tripping about the cutoff. I was tripping about her response to the cutoff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, she wasn't having it, bro. She was like, motherfucker, this is my neighborhood now, bitch. We taking over. For sure. So, like, I mean, what you saying, like, they changing they changing the, the, the hood area, but like you just said, the people in the hood still there. You got to think is that in my generation, the blacks was out. I mean, the whites was out. And the blacks was in. That's how we had the Central Parks and the Robles Parks and the all these inner city places where all the blacks was. Because the whites was out in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Correct. Now they're taking their 
uh, inner city back and pushing us out. That's all it is. Because it was like that once before, a long time ago. White people had the inner city. But then we got it. Now, guess what? All right, look, we, you know, we want our downtown back. Let's tear these projects down. It's making the city, it's giving it a black eye. Them projects have been there for 50 years. Long Let's tear them down now, long time. Like Armature Works area. Yes. It, you know, we're going to nice. go ahead and tear this down. Even over there? Yeah, even that river walk, all that stuff, yeah. man. Yes. Like, yeah. It didn't turn it up for sure, man. But nah, I got another question for you though, bro. Like, you know, like you talked, you got a lot of homeboys, you know, still like that in dead time uh, that's doing time still currently to this day. So like, would you ever like, you know what I'm saying, put it on a bigger platform and, you know, like really go talk to these, you know what I'm saying, current inmates that's in jail right now? Definitely, man. I mean, if the platform was there and I could talk to them, because a lot of them reach out now and I take out my time a lot of the DMs and texts and stuff like that, I can hear the pain, you know what I'm saying? So I take my time out, you know what I'm saying? Talk to, I can't talk to everybody, and I want to apologize for that. You know what I'm saying? A few people, like, I need to really reach back out to them, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't never want, I don't even care if you had 500 followers, and I don't want to make five feel bad, you know what I'm saying? Especially if they mm -hmm. support my whole cause and make me feel good, you know? So I want to apologize for that. i just been all over the place. Y'all got to realize that this is new to me. You know what I'm saying? This whole thing is very, 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 very new to me. I'm just figuring it out as I go. That's why I ask y'all all the time to help me. Help me out with this shit. All y'all viewers, all you bring, come on in and help me. Help Ronnie Red. Help me out. I don't mind help, man. I don't mind asking for no help. For sure. So would you ever think about, you know what I'm saying? I know you, I know you, you know what I'm saying, already of edge, but getting into politics? Um, I was in, in the feds. You have eight TVs. Six to eight TVs in every unit, meaning every dorm. They have a CNN TV. They have a sports TV. They have a BET TV. They have a Spanish TV for the Spanish boys. They have a sports TV. They have all these. In every fed prison, it's like that. We don't share one or two TVs. It's a lot of them, different TV rooms and everything. And I said that to say is I was one of the most CNN watching niggas for years. CNN and Fox and shit like that. I sat up under that TV, and it was about 20 of us, and all of us was crazy. <laughs> all uh, CNN drove us fucking. If you want to meet some bugs in prison, <laughs> y'all, go to a CNN TV in any fed prison and sit around those guys right there. They're some of the most intelligent people now, I'm going to tell you that. But imagine that, how, how burnt out they is in the arguments they're going to be about politics over there. A whole bunch of burnt out ass niggas been in there for 15, 20 years, sitting in front of CNN just watching loops all day because the TV doesn't turn off of CNN. Mm -hmm. That's a CNN TV. We don't watch sports over here. We don't watch the BET Awards. We don't watch no love and hip-hop over here. This CNN. The only thing that can interrupt CNN in a motherfucking federal motherfucking penitentiary is the World Series and the goddamn Super Bowl. That's the only thing they're going to respect. We don't respect no Grammys and all that old other shit. No, this is CNN TV. We need to sit over here and watch Donald Trump and Joe Biden and, and Obama and every son of a bitch else that done lied to us. <laughs> what is like in the feds when they come through and flip it on, on, on this on shakedown? Shakedowns, I done been through. Oh, my God, I've been through thousands of them. Shakedowns in the feds is way different from shakedowns in the state because in the feds, they're looking for... Uh, Alcohol, they're looking for drugs, they're looking for cell phones. And not saying that that doesn't go on in the state. It's just like in the feds, it's in a whole nother different level. That's like in the feds, I used to make $500 a week making alcohol. I was gambling, hustling, you know, selling drugs and stuff like that in prison. You know what I'm saying? But I was also just one of my side hustles. I was making $500 a week selling alcohol. And alcohol in the feds is different from the state. The state pretty much, y'all used to the hooch. The stuff looked like orange juice and the shit looked disgusting. Well, the feds sell that shit there too, but they also got what they call white lightning, where they burn it. And when I mean burn it, the way they be up all night and they put a stinger. A stinger is like what be the bottom of an iron, the chrome part. Mm -hmm. And they cut that off of an iron and they drop that into that liquid. And they cook this alcohol and they cook it to where it's like vodka, to where you can put it in a bottle of water and there's not even a speck of nothing floating around. You can set it on fire and everything. And they sell that Jeez. shit for about $75 to $100 a bottle. A 16-ounce bottle? A regular water bottle. <laughs> and that's big business in there. Big business. They drink hard in the Fed. Yes. They have alcoholic camps in the Fed, y'all. I'm giving y'all some real game right now. What I mean, alcoholic camps where... 
this prison is just full of drunks. Wow. They don't send them there because they drunks. They just this. They call them drinking compounds. Mm. Yeah. Man, they partying now, man. It's a whole different world, man. So, like, speaking on speaking on partying, man. Like nowadays, they, they like the jits. You know what I'm saying? They on they on the Instagrams and shit. They go live on there, bro. They having big goulash parties, and you know what I'm saying? And hanging out, smoking that, you know, smoking, you know, hanging out, just playing cards. Everybody got money. I didn't seen I didn't seen some crazy shit off in on Instagram, bro. Like on some of them clips, like niggas that's in jail, you wouldn't even think how. Like they even having fashion shows in there. Yeah, that's why I was just gonna say, like <laughs> niggas having real deal fashion shows it's like, in there. It's like, man, you gotta think is a lot of states are rocking too, and I never want to take nothing from them, whether it's state or federal. But you have to realize is that a lot of dudes been in there for twenty and thirty and forty, fifty years or whatever, and they done made a way in there, man. Like, how do you think you're going to keep on suppressing these people without these people being comfortable? You know what I'm saying? That's like when I went in the Fed, they was comfortable. They was they was, they was was in there. They was getting money. They was smoking. They was drinking. They was drugging. They was gambling. They was doing what the fucks. They was doing what they wanted to do, bro. Right in the eyes of the police. You know what I'm saying? It was right there. You know what I'm saying? That's like me. I got like some over... Uh, 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 400 and some tattoos all over my body. You think, ain't no police see me getting this done? That's what I'm saying. And not to throw shade at them, they was just wasn't fucking with us. You know what I'm saying? They was just more like, this motherfucker, you know, he got life, he got three lives, he got 30, yeah, he got 40. You, Is you know? we finna lock him up about getting a tattoo that we know that he's gonna get wrapped back out of probably in the next seven days and he gonna do it all over again. And if you catch him again, he gonna keep doing it over and over. So a lot of them really ain't give a fuck. We just used to respect a lot of them be like, all right, this one, he ain't going for it. But a lot of them used to just sit there and watch it. Mm-hmm. You know, we be in that bitch burning and every motherfucking thing drinking and burning. I'm laying there. I got my shirt off. It's three, four niggas in this motherfucking room. They laughing at me, fucking with me and shit. Because mm-hmm. I might, the motherfucker might hit my side a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, we, you know, yeah, man, it's a different world in there, bro. For sure, man. Well, man, we def- we getting down to the bottom of the podcast, man. You got any more questions for me? Um, club life now in Tampa has changed since you last left. And even more so how people engage in club. Correct. You don't got to go in the club now. Social media, like how, how did that affect you coming out and having to engage with women? Um. To sum it up, the club life was different and the dating life was different. And the dating life, you know, it was cool, but it was more or less like the women of today, especially the younger ones, like they don't respect, man, they ain't got no respect, dog. Like I don't know what kind of niggas they used to fucking with. It's like a few of them motherfuckers done said some shit to me a couple of times. My head done twist like the motherfucking exorcist, dog. Like a thousand. I was like, what the fuck did this just say to me? You know what I'm saying? And that's just used to the, you know what I'm saying, of the caliber of nigga that they used to dealing with. Because I done lost women. You know what I'm I started to say something else. I thought I done lost some, <laughs> But I done lost women, man, because I could have played it out at the beginning and let her get off on me and still got what I wanted at the end. But then it just kept going on and on cause I, and until uh, I couldn't take it no more. And then I went ahead and checked the motherfucker, and then the bitch ran off. You know what I'm saying? But... If she ran off of that right there, then, you know what I'm saying, that's what it is. I just don't believe in that. I ain't no, you know, I don't believe in no caveman days of beating a woman across no head and big me, little you, but I believe in a man should be able to lead. You know what I'm saying? I just believe in that. I'm old school when it comes to that. I don't think no woman has no reason leading no goddamn family and she got a man, allegedly man, in that house. I'm going to die with that saying right there. Yes, sir. I don't give a damn. Yeah, boy. You know. We are partners, women. Mm -hmm. We are partners. Let me go ahead and straighten that. This ain't no bullshit. I was we about partners. to say, girls go, girl. Listen, females, women, they definitely feel like, even if they, you know, if they got more going on than you, or they feel like they helped you out in this way, that way, they feel like, you know, I'm the person that's gonna wear the pants. And that's crazy, you know that's what I'm saying? Crazy. Because I don't have nothing, bro. And it's like, when they start talking that kind of verbiage, it just pisses me off. Because I'm like. Like, what the hell done happened? Like, because you got to think, a lot of these dudes, man, they playing the babysitter. You know, mm-hmm. he home all day on the PlayStation, playing <laughs> it, you know, eating the cereal. You know what I'm saying? Breaking down the couch. When he finished, you see how nice this couch is. This bitch going to be leaned to the side when he finished with it. He going to weigh that goddamn couch out. He going to hold that girl car when he come back. 
pick up from a job. It's going to be blunt rappers everywhere. Ain't going to be no gas in the car. And it might be a car full of niggas in there, man. They were kind of niggas that they used to. So they don't have no respect for a nigga like that. So when they meet a man, you know what I'm saying, that's motherfucking standing on business. And standing on business don't motherfucking mean that you necessarily got to have a pocket full of money. Because it's a difference between being poor and being broke. You know what I'm saying? I done been broke a whole lot of times. But poor is a state of mind. Poor is a disease. Poor can be generational. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? It can be generational when you talk about you poor. I'm not poor. My ass is just broke. But I can be all right tomorrow. But poor, I don't ever want to be poor. Poor is a state of mind, man. It's hard. It's like a disease that's, that is hard to shake. Facts. And and it's, and it's hard. I'm going to say, you know, it's hard to kind of for me and I to date. You know what I'm saying? Because... You got certain you got certain people that'd be like, oh, the 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 females would be like, you know, how much you how much you got? You feel me? You gotta come with something. Correct. You gotta come with three fifty. You gotta come with you know what I'm saying? Half on this, half on that, a light bill, a rent. Anything. This is the thing right here, man. I don't never want to play, and I'm gonna look in this camera when I say this right here. I don't never want to play, and I'm not gonna never play the John role. You know what I mean? I don't mind, and you know what I mean. A John role. I'm talking about a trick, a John, a sugar daddy, or anything like that, right there. I'm not gonna never play that role, right there. I don't mind if I'm with a young lady, or anything like that, and we go get something to eat or something like that. And I may even, you know, buy your rolls or something. I don't know, but I'm talking about me just strictly just playing the role of a John and me paying all your bills and all you doing is just sitting up all day looking pretty with pink toenails, and that's it, and some. Good pussy, and that's all you bring into the table. No, nah, I ain't playing that New game. New generation right there, got it bad now, cause now nigga call it pop it. You <laughs> feel me? Pop it is, and we out at the club, and these these group of hoes right here, shit, finna show on these blues. Going damn. there, niggas ain't throwing ones, niggas throwing blues, cause these hoes right here. Man, <sighs> make it fall on the hoe. Huh. See, now that's I what see. I'm talking about, man. You know, back <laughs> in my time, man, it was only a couple of drugs they was on, man. You know what I mean? A little Coke. You know what I mean? <laughs> For the older generation, not my generation, you know what I'm saying? A crack. You know, y'all probably think that that's my generation, but it's not. Really, it's a generation that was a little above me that was crack kids. Because yeah. when I was younger, when I was, uh, you know, all my life coming up, my parents, per se, age was the crack kids. You know what I mean? But uh, it was just on a couple of drugs. Nah, man, you little motherfuckers on everything. Man. Yeah, but that, that <laughs> what like, the fuck? like, you know, I feel like I ain't going to say it's, it's, it's way, you know, because crack way bigger. But crack and, and Molly, I'm talking about when Molly hit. Yeah. Boy. Molly's shit bad fucked up right the now. Street, for, man. For the I walked up. For, the, for my generation, that it's fucked bad. up the streets. Crack fucked up the streets. No, no lie, that bitch that made movies and documentaries, all that shit. Molly but, is that bad? Molly is that bad right now, bro. I, I guess I can say. In, I in, guess in you know I'm not. You know, I don't no, want to be in that I world. I'm not in that world. <laughs> but I didn't know it was that bad, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. bad. It's bad. It, it is bad. It's bad. They zombied out. That's why you see them zombied out. They standing up. They leaning. Like, Listen, man. Molly. I walked in the corner store the other day, right? I walked in the corner store the other day. So when I got out of the car, it was about uh three, four young niggas standing there. You know, they didn't look like they want no trouble, and then I didn't want no trouble. So, but they had the door blocked. So when I got ready to walk by the motherfucking door, I walked by the door, and it was this one little nigga. He probably wore about 130, a good 130. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Old black-ass niggas, his eyes yellow, his fingernails brown, <laughs> lips motherfucking white. Look like he done <laughs> been up for a few days. Little nigga bumping into me, dog. So when he bumped into me, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't tripping about that, you know, because I fuck with the young niggas and shit like that. So I understand the game. So when he bumped into me and shit like that, it's just the way he looked at me like, nigga, what? And I just looked at him like this right here and just, just this motherfucker looked the other way and went on in the store, man. I say this little motherfucker right here, man. Because ain't no motherfucking doubt in my mind he had something on him. But I respect it. Like, I ain't going to never be in situations where I can be tricked out of my life in a small situation like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Especially with no young nigga. You know what I'm saying? He like got to go out his way. Days on demon time. Boy, man, I ain't got no business boy. arguing with no motherfucking young ass nigga. Bro, what the, what the nah. hell I look like uh-uh. arguing one of you motherfuckers, man? Bro, you can beat one of these little ass, and they gonna kill your ass. Ain't bro. no question. Bro, ain't no, <laughs> ain't no question. Always toting, boy, without a doubt, boy. Yeah, for sure, man. We definitely appreciate you for coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Returning, Ronnie Red, man. Tapping Ronnie in, Red, man, out, on all man. platforms, man. Like I said, this summer, man, I got a lot coming out. You know, and my whole thing is I try to educate. Um, you know what I'm saying? The viewers to uh, the realities of incarceration. 
You know what I'm saying? Whether it's the pain of a loved one coming home or the pain of a loved one having to go in or the lifestyle in. You know, I'm not here, you know, to try to, uh, you know, to um, uh, any kind of way glamorize the prison life, but it is my life. And I know the life. If anything, like I say, my hashtags are fuck prison, stay out of jail, free the ladies, free the boys. You know, and I'm going to just keep saying that. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, it's just a lot of people are misinformed as to what the hell is really going on. And the reason why I know they're misinformed, because even with my shirt that my paperwork 100, a lot of people don't even understand what that means. So that's how I know they don't understand the in-depth parts of it, of dating someone in prison. The ladies might be dating a dude in prison and stuff like that, or the vice versa and stuff like that, and just understanding that person and what they're going through and the lifestyle in there. So, you know, that's all I try to do. For sure, for sure. Man, we definitely rocking with Ronnie Red, man. Tapping in and tapping out. We are Florida Podcast, presented by Mitts on the Center. It's your boy, B.R. Ratchet. Let's ride. That's right. Thank y'all for having me. For sure, man. Yes, sir.